Jesus! That was loud. What's up everyone, my name is Sam Eckholm and today I'm with the US Army National Guard to give you an up close look at one of the most widely produced rocket launching systems. Not only is this thing able to fire a fast and deadly arsenal at the enemy, but it's actually capable of wiping entire grid zones off the map. So if you haven't already, I recommend you strap in because this is a day with the US Army's High Mars rocket launching system. Now I have to admit, when I heard I'd have the chance to spend the day here with the US Army, I was pretty excited. You see, I've had the chance to cover a bunch of different military mission sets, but never anything quite like this. I mean, at a first glance, it's pretty terrifying, but this thing is able to be transported all across the world to protect our soldiers, civilians, and infrastructure as our adversaries become more and more sophisticated. Now for all those who are wondering, HIMARS stands for High Mobility Artillery Rocket System. And yeah, it's exactly that. An incredibly powerful rocket launcher used by the US Army to provide close and long range precision missile fire. The HIMARS is operated by a crew of three that includes the driver, gunner, and section chief, who are all responsible for carrying out its mission of blowing stuff up. Which speaking of, the firepower on this thing is pretty incredible. The HIMARS carries a six pack of precision strike rockets capable of hitting targets up to 70 kilometers away. It takes only 20 seconds to ready the rockets and within 45 seconds, all six rockets can be fired in a flurry of launches that I think we'd all agree probably wouldn't be too fun to be on the receiving end. Now, if there's one thing I learned, it's that no matter how sophisticated the equipment is you're working with, you have to have the personnel behind the scenes to support it. And the Army does an incredible job of training new recruits to become highly skilled soldiers in their specific career fields. Now, if you guys are ready, I say it's time we go meet the crew behind the High Mars, the individuals tasked with supporting and operating one of the most powerful missile systems in the world. Let me introduce you to the 3rd Battalion of the 157th Field Artillery Regiment. They go by the nickname King of Battle, and their mission is simple. Destroy, defeat, or disrupt the enemy with some serious firepower. The men and women of this highly elite unit go through a series of specialized training to get qualified in their specific career fields, all of which contribute to the overall mission of the HIMARS. Now what's pretty cool is that the unit I'm with today is actually a part of the Colorado Army National Guard. Now the Guard shares many of the same duties as active duty members, but they benefit individual states in times of disaster. For example, the Colorado Guard serves a dual role and are often called upon to aid in wildfires, floods, blizzards, and civil unrest. Now, no, I don't think you'll ever see a high Mars rocket launching system sent to the middle of Colorado Springs to disperse a protest, but the Guard just goes to show how many amazing opportunities there are for those of you interested in joining the Army. You may have heard the phrase, you're only as strong as the team around you, and that idea applies to the military more than you might ever imagine. There's hundreds of career fields in the Army, and every single one of them plays a vital role in getting the job done. If we take a look specifically at the HIMARS mission, well, sure, you have your cannon crew members, fire control specialists, and radar operators, but you also have career fields like intelligence analysts, healthcare specialists, public affairs, and food services, all of which add to the mission of dominating the battlefield anytime, anywhere.
So here we are in front of the incredible HIMARS rocket launching system. I'm joined by Staff Sergeant Clinton Rushing, who's one of the crew chiefs that gets to operate this explosive piece of machinery. So sir, I've got to ask, you know, what's it like to work on this thing? You know, it's a lot of fun. Uh, you get to deploy around the world and uh, shoot rockets and blow stuff up. Yeah, and I assume you've been in the Army for a little bit of time, so I like to ask, you know, what made you join? And to anyone out there who's watching, what advice do you have for them if they want to join the Army? Yeah, the reason I joined uh, when I started out was the college aspect. I wanted to get some college behind me, and uh, and uh, since then I've been doing it now 15, 16 years, and uh, I haven't stopped. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, I think if I was going to give that advice to somebody who's looking for something to do, this is a great opportunity to, to serve your country and get some college while you're doing it. So this is the high Mars. Uh, this is the business end of it. This is the launcher. Uh, we can shoot six rockets or one missile, uh, depending on which munitions we have tight, uh, loaded up. Uh, on the back here is several different things. You have everything from the computers that run it, the hydraulics, um, and extra sponsors for all the crew gear and stuff. So how far can this actually launch? What's the range on it? Uh, we plan for around 70 kilometers. Uh, a lot of the other information is not available. Classified, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> So uh, this is the pod we have on now is actually our trainer pod. We'll swap it out for some uh, training rounds that we use to certify with and, and uh, uh, get our crew certified with. Uh, on the side here, of course, you got the, the LM, which is the launcher uh, module. And when we start shooting, you'll see it uh, it'll lift and raise up towards the sky. And we have to verify the, the height and azimuth of it. The azimuth is the direction of fire. And uh, once we verify that, then we'll flip a switch and the rockets go boom. So this is the operation center of the, of the HIMARS. Uh, this is where the drivers sit. Uh, he controls the vehicle. He's got the gear shift. He can drop it down into six by six. He's got a tire inflation system so we can adjust the tires, inflate the tires based on the terrain that we're driving across. Uh, he also controls the CAFU so when we seal up and get ready to shoot, um, it filters the air and pushes air out so that uh, the cab remains pressurized. Nice, and so who's sitting where I'm at right now? So this is the gunner seat. This okay. is where the magic happens. Nice. Uh, so uh, the gunner here will process fire missions. Mm -hmm. uh, he ensures that we have the correct target, the headings are correct, that everything is, is okay. Okay. Um, and so, we fire yeah, and if I want to hit the fire button, like where's that? Where's the button that makes this thing go boom? It's, uh, it's that second button. Oh, right here, okay. Right here. Yep. You just trigger this thing and yep. then lock yep. it. Yep, you'd have to leave, lift that and then hit the fire switch. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, you'd lift that and then when, he, uh, when we get the word to fire, then we shoot it and that's it. The rocket goes down range. Awesome. All right, so by this point, we've learned about the mission of the High Mars. We've gotten up close to look at its features and learned about the crew that operates and supports this thing. However, I think we're missing something. Oh, we're missing something. You know, I think it's time that we fire this bad boy up and actually see what it's capable of. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Now as excited as I was to see the missiles launch, I knew that to give you guys the full experience, I'd need to take you inside the HIMARS to see what it's actually like. But to do that, you need to be wearing some special protective equipment, and unfortunately, my skinny jeans and black t-shirt weren't going to cut it. If I was going to be the one to flip the switch and hit the fire button, I was going to have to make a few changes. And so yeah, that's what I did. All right, as you can see, I'm all geared up. On my chest right now is a ballistics vest, which the US Army uses in deployed environments and while they're training to protect our core here. And then my hand is a CVC, a combat vehicle crew member's helmet, which they use in multiple different units to uh, you know, protect the cranium here. So it's also got some ear pro, because things are gonna get a bit loud, but I'm all ready, so here we go. Now the first thing I noticed when I got into the HIMARS is that it's quite a bumpy ride. And as our driver began the trek through the woods to the firing range, I found myself being thrown around a little bit more than I expected. 
We made a quick stop by ammunitions to get loaded up with our pack of rockets and then radioed in to receive our coordinates for the location we would be firing on. At this point, I was really just doing my best to stay out of the way and let the expert soldiers do what they do best. But as we made our way out onto the range and positioned our launcher into place, things got very real. Because before I knew it, the section chief gave me the command to fire, and my god, was it insane. <laughs> oh my god. Now if you think this is the end of the video, well, I hate to disappoint you. If there's one thing I've learned about the army, it's that they're always looking for an excuse to blow stuff up. So as part of their training, once I had safely exited the HIMARS, they got the green light to fire a few more. Well, I guess I should say, a lot more. Guys, I'm not gonna lie, my ears are ringing, my head hurts, but that was easily one of the coolest things I have done in my entire life. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about the HIMARS missile launching system. If you guys have any more questions or are curious about the Colorado Army National Guard, well, I'm gonna leave some links in the description to where you can find out more. Thanks for hanging out, appreciate you, and I'll see you next time.